So we're going to build on the rather straightforward aspect of scale equals how big it is and talk about the more complex concept of proportion. When we're talking about proportion, it's relative scale. It is how big is it compared to? And then we're going to fill in that blank. So proportion is always a comparative scale measure. One aspect of proportion that we're going to want to know about is internal proportion. And that's basically, does the object have the right sizes compared to the other parts of that object? So most of the time when we're thinking about internal proportions, we're comparing parts to the whole thing. Think about it this way. LeBron James is larger than the average human, but his head is the right size for his body, his hands are the right size for his body. So what we could do is say that he has consistent internal proportions. What makes this interesting, though, is that it raises the question of compared to what? So when we're thinking about how big LeBron James is, part of what we're also doing, in addition to the fact that his head seems like the right size for his body, is we're comparing how big LeBron James is to how big we expect a person to be. And that is why we are starting with this classical Greek statue in bronze, because we want to spend at least a little bit of a minute thinking about the fact that a lot of times when we're talking about proportions, we aren't comparing the parts of the thing to the whole thing. We're comparing how big it is compared to a mental norm that we have, some sort of expectation. So LeBron James's internal proportions are consistent, but he is disproportionately large for what we expect a human to be. So where does this mental norm come from? For us, in Western culture at least, it comes from ancient Greece, where we have been indoctrinated by classical antiquity plus the Renaissance plus cameras to assume that the way things look is the way things are supposed to look. And what we do then is compare the object, the thing, the art, the whatever, to basically roughly how big we think a person should be. What's interesting about that, though, is that how big we think a person should be is subject to change. Because one of the things that we can see through time and through different cultures is the expectation of what defines the ideal of beauty, the standard by which we're going to evaluate whether or not anything else looks right, is going to change. Because we have gone from the, wow, how did he get so buff, of the classical Greek, through the, she's got enough thickness to survive a northern European winter of the Rubens image on the right to the she's a genetic freak that has been selected for her thinness to be a model in the Ann Taylor catalog. Except one of the things that's really interesting about our current time is that we're cheating even with that. Not only are we selecting people who are dangerously thin, but then we run them through Photoshop and make them inhumanly thin. What we want to do then is to understand that while there is a sort of general fuzzy mental norm of how big something ought to be, as defined by man as the measure of all things, a phrase that was literally carved onto the side of a Greek temple, we also want to understand that there are cultural influences that dictate that. What we're further going to do is think about proportion not just as a comparison to that mental norm, but really get into this issue of internal proportions, which is why we're going to look at this guy a little more closely. We could understand the definition for internal proportions maybe a little more clearly by talking about the noticeable aberration so, for example, if we're looking at something that is clearly out of proportion, we're more likely to notice it. So think about political cartoons, for example. Almost always, we're going to exaggerate the features. 
we're going to make the head huge for one thing. And then in political cartoons, we as a culture apparently just decide that there's some aspect of the physical appearance of the, let's say, president that we're going to make outrageously large or outrageously small. For Obama, we always gave him big ears. For Trump, we always give him tiny hands. Are his hands really that small? No, but it pisses him off, so we do it. The example here actually does have a deliberate, conceptually oriented distortion of the internal proportions. It's just that we're too polite to talk about it. But if some of you gentlemen in the class have been feeling a little confident while this guy's been up on the screen, it's actually important that you know that he has been given a deliberately small penis. What we see in ancient Greek art is that there is frequently a contrast between the rational, logical, emotionally in control, stoic, intellectual, ideal man and some wild beast. Think about when you guys were learning about the Metapis sculptures on the Parthenon, the Battle of the Lapiths and the Centaurs involved idealized human males fighting for the virtue of young ladies against centaurs who are like a horse in certain aspects. So what we have is a situation where while we aren't used to talking about it, that's actually a large part of the content here. This is such a part of Greek culture the small penis equals in control of your emotions, that it shows up in all of their arts. There are plays where one character will affectionately refer to another as little prick. We actually have a what amounts to a recruitment brochure for a military academy in ancient Greek that tells parents to send them their young men or young boys and will send them back young men who are sharp of mind, hard of body, and small of cock. I don't think that this is something that the Air Force Academy is going to be using anytime soon. But what we get is an understanding that every aspect is contributing to the content. And here we have a disproportionately small part of the figure that is intended to control or show the emotional control that this figure has. You don't have to worry about him being a date rapist, and we can tell because of the idealized manner in which his form is depicted. 